Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, March 5th, and it is a chilly morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Chilly for March, but uh, the sun is trying to peek through the clouds, and we'll see how it goes. It's not going to be too terrible today. Ah, so this morning I am getting ready to enjoy a bowl of uh, this here Esoterica Dunbar. And I'm going to be smoking that in my little cane rod pipes demi levant and I just I haven't loaded it yet because I'm slow <laughs> I'm moving kind of slow this morning but um, this has so Dunbar is a, is a Virginia Perique a vapor um, it's a seven Virginia blend apparently and uh, lots of Perique and it definitely now this is a couple years old I'll tell you how I got this in a minute but this definitely is dominated by that sort of figgy, pruney, raisiny, uh, perique uh, smell. So I'm going to load that up. And the, I don't know how old this is. It's at least a couple years old. Um, and the reason I don't know is that it was actually a gift from, I believe, and I feel bad that I didn't write it on the jar or something. I believe this was from my friend um, Tony in Rhode Island, Sigma Man Tony. Signal Man Tony. I think it was Signal Man Tony that, that gave this to me. Uh, I hope I got that right. It was a very kind gift, uh, regardless of the giver. But I'm pretty certain it was Tony. And uh, I've had I've had a little bit here and there. I don't I don't smoke it that often because I'm not a vapor guy really. But I do occasionally enjoy them. And I was looking forward to having one this morning. I got that loaded. Um, it is a, uh, I believe this is pressed, cut into uh, flakes, and then rubbed out. So this is kind of like a rough rubbed out flake. And again, I don't know how much age is on this, but I've enjoyed the bowls I've had so far. So let's light her up. Given that it's a flake, it's going to take me a little bit more. Oh, well, it's a rubbed out flake, but a little bit harder to light the ribbon cut, which is fine. Hmm. This is nice stuff. This is. Um, Very good, sweet, slightly, slightly tart, but but not oh, you know lemony, citrusy, uh, Virginia. Just a little edge to it, but a lot of that deep, bready sweetness. Uh, and perique is plenty of perique. Good stuff. Now I don't often smoke or talk about esoterica blends because I'm not a fan of chasing after unobtainium and uh, but if somebody's kind enough to give it to me I'm gonna smoke it. Yeah. You know, if you're ever lucky enough to get some of this or any, you know, unobtainium. Jar it up, enjoy it. You know, enjoy it from time to time or smoke it all at once, whatever. But don't devote your life to finding it because there's plenty of good tobacco out there. You know, more than enough for everybody. <laughs> Mm. 
but this is nice. So thank you, uh, thank you, Tony, and if it wasn't Tony, thank you, whoever you were. My apologies. I'll talk more about the tobacco as we go on, but basically it's a good, solid Virginia Perique. Um, the Virginias are well done, but a bit more complex than what you might typically expect. But that's the esotericus thing, you know, germane. They do make good stuff. I, I, I will give them that. I just don't know why. They make so little of it. So um, the reason I'm, I wanted a, a vapor today is on Friday. So I didn't smoke a pipe until like 10 o'clock last night. I had one bowl of haunted bookshop. And I'll, this was yesterday. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. Um, but previously on Friday night, we, we got to talking about Virginia Periques and in particular a scudo and you know a scudo's perfectly fine tobacco but it's like the the mcdonald's of virginia Perks. you know it's what everybody expects you're going to be smoking and and it's just kind of bland you know it's 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 got a lot of perique in it it's got some really nice virginia in it it's it's pressed well and but it's there's nothing special about it it's just it's the mcdonald's of vapors and there's a lot of really good vapors out there that get ignored because people will go after, you know, chase after the one that's uh, got all the press. And it's a shame. So I was going to actually have uh, one of my favorites this morning, one that I've really grown to like over time, uh, and that was Poplar Camp. And I've been aging some... Uh, and, and trying it every once in a while. And I took that jar out and it's dated August of 2020. And I thought, well, rather than smoke that today and talk about it, why don't I wait until August and then I'll do like a three year review of it. So we'll let that go. I will probably forget between now and August, but maybe somebody will remind me. Yeah, so that's why the plan was Virginia Preek today. And right next to Poplar Camp in the Virginia Perique drawer, I, I don't have a Virginia Perique drawer. <laughs> I just have one drawer with lots of jars of tobacco in it uh, in the basement here. And right next to that jar was this jar of uh, Dunbar. I get the I get the esoteric and names mixed up, so I have to check. This still has not lit properly for me. So I didn't, there we go. I didn't have much tobacco yesterday because uh, I went down to my friend's shop to continue to work on the stained glass window project that I've talked about previously uh, for his movie. And we got a lot done. Unfortunately, I didn't take any pictures, so I asked him to send me some pictures, and uh, if, he, if he does, I will share them with you next time. But we've got basically the um, the spokes of the window in place, and now he his job is to make the glass inserts that go into the, to the spokes. And of course, they're not going to be made of glass, but I don't want to give away the movie magic. But it's, it's looking good. Um, we, we had an interesting bit of discussion over whether the, the center of the window should actually be centered or should it be it, relative to where the thing is going to be shot from. So relative to the can, camera angle, should you center the, the middle of the window or should it be offset? Because if you're actually sitting there looking at a real window, the center is going to be offset because of the angle. Yeah, this... Uh, this didn't go anywhere. We eventually did what he wanted to do, and that's what we were always going to do because it's his darn movie. But so I, I, I leave in the morning, and you know, I made a tobacco pouch, filled my lighter, got everything. I actually took an extra tamper because I was driving my wife's car. And I get out on the road, and about 15 minutes out, I realize I didn't bring a pipe. 
So I said, oh, you idiot. And I didn't want to turn around because it's, it's a half an hour I'm going to lose. So, uh, And then I just happened to realize that the route that I was taking to the highway was going to take me past this beer distributor that has a really good cigar humidor in it. I thought, well, what the heck? I'll, I'll just grab some cigars. So I pulled in there. Uh, they had just opened. It was 9 o'clock in the morning. They had just opened. And I grabbed two um, Rocky Patel Edge Sumatra, which I like and bought them got back on the road and everything and then realized my wife's gonna kill me if i smoke a cigar in her car she probably wouldn't she's very tolerant but at the same time she's going to pittsburgh on monday she's gonna have to have her parents in the car and stuff i better not smoke so i didn't have anything until i got home last night and then i had uh, some on a bookshop so it was a tobacco uh free day for the most part but we had a good time Had a good time, got a lot done, had a nice lunch. Uh, yeah, it was it was a good day. Even without a pipe, it was a good day. The other stuff that's going on is I had a couple of appliance issues that uh, had to had to deal with this past week and. The one was our dryer. We have a front-loading dryer. It's made by Bosch. And my wife calls me at work and says, the dryer is broken. And I said, okay, uh, I'll take a look at it when I get home. And she said, I'm going to try to clean out the vent. I said, they said, it's not the vent. It's not. She, by the vent, she means the, the tubing going to the outside venting. She's convinced that that gets clogged and the dryer doesn't work anymore. In theory, that could happen, but it doesn't get clogged. It's a very large bore vent, and for the most part, it's just hot air going through it. Um, every time we, you know, clean behind the dryer and stuff, I clean that vent out. I, I do it quite frequently, and there's nothing in it. Anyway, so just leave it alone. I will take care of it. So I convince her not to do anything, which is good. Good. And... Bosch, German made, German designed. So I, I love the German people. I, I have a real affection for them. I, I, I've got a large part of me that's German. Um, I have always enjoyed their culture. I studied German, the German language when I was in high school. I like German food. I have quite a few good friends from Germany. Excellent German pipe tobaccos. Uh, not so much German pipes, they're very filter crazy, but that's, that's an understood. Uh, they're fine pipes, I just don't like filters. But German engineering. So German engineering is wonderful. It's solid. It's, it's well thought out. Well, but God forbid you have to fix it. And this is true. I I, I dealt with a a well two actually German companies, three German companies, um, in terms of my scientific life, my like lab equipment kind of stuff. Uh, really good stuff. I would I would buy from them because of the quality. And other people were using uh, Japanese equipment for for the kind of work I do, which is great. You know, it's really, again they're very good engineers. They do good work. But the Germans are just a little bit better, in my opinion, for this stuff. We're talking about precision equipment, precision posi precision positioning equipment, and things like that. So, but boy, if it breaks. So this dryer, um, I look at it, I run it, I realize what's wrong. This has happened before. It's not broken. She didn't clean out the lint filter. And if that is a big problem, it overheats and it has a thermal overload switch that triggers to prevent damage to the heating coil or perhaps a fire. So it's a good thing. 
This has happened. We've had this dryer for probably 10 years. This has happened once prior to the other night. So I have to reset the switch. That's all. It's simple. Just and it's back in service. Switch is in the back. Pull the dryer out. Not trivial. It's up on a pedestal. Not on wheels or anything. But I, I get the thing rocked out. Then I have to get behind it. I have to take the back off. Well, in order to take the back off, you have to take the top off. Not a big problem. I believe it's four screws. I believe it's four screws. Top lifts off, slides forward. Now I have access to the top screws on the back. It's four of those. Take those out. Now you have to take the screws off the back itself. There are 36 screws holding the back of this thing on. 36. So I take them all off. <laughs> back, you can't take it off because there's you know, like wires and stuff attached to it. So you can just kind of swing it out enough. But that's okay. And then I can reach my hand in, get to the side of the motor, and go, the switch. And then I have to put it all back together. So 36 screws have to go back in there. And it runs beautifully. It's, it's fit. I mean, now I've got to get it back into position. It's harder to push it back than it is to pull it out. I don't understand that. But anyway, so this very simple pushing of a button took me ooh, about an hour and a half. <laughs> but not a big deal. It's done, and, you know. At least I know how to fix this one. And the beauty of this thing is, you know, it's really a very simple device. Uh, there's not a lot that could go wrong with this that I couldn't fix, and I like that. Although I wish it was a little easier to access it. So that happens. That's that was that was great. There, yeah, I felt very accomplished. However, the night before, my wife calls me at work. The Instant Pot is broken. Apparently, it was my wife's week to break appliances. The Instant Pot is broken. Uh, I plug it in. So when we plug this thing in, it immediately lights up. It doesn't seem to have an off and on switch. Um, and then you, I mean, it's in a hold mode. It doesn't get hot or anything. If you don't know what an Instant Pot is, an Instant Pot is a newfangled fancy pressure cooker that's like computer controlled. I thought it was crazy because I just would use a pressure cooker, but it is actually quite an amazing device and I highly recommend you look into them if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, in terms of kitchen appliances, it's my favorite. Uh, we cook all kinds of stuff in it. I, I, for, it makes fantastic rice and that's what we use it for most. Uh, mashed potatoes, you know, any, anything like that, it's, it's great at, and I'll, I'll make an occasional soup or stew or something like that, and fantastic. So if this is broken, I'm in trouble, especially since she's going away on Monday. I gotta get a new one because I, this is like pretty much the only way I know how to cook these days. Exaggerating. So anyway, I said, okay, I'll, I'll fix it. And she said, you can't fix it. I looked it up. That you have to just get a new one. You can't fix them when this happens. So okay, I'm sure your, I'm sure your 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 my face friends told you that. But let me look at it. You know, I'm not I'm not an idiot. So <laughs> so I go home and I plug it in and nothing happens. Like, oh boy. So I start looking on YouTube and stuff to see, because I don't even know how to get into this thing. I don't, doesn't have any obvious screws or anything, so it's one of these things where you're going to have to probably pop some clips. And, and I'm not seeing a lot, and what I am seeing is like stuff I don't want to really get into. And I'm thinking, was this wasn't that expensive. I could just buy another one. It's easy enough. It's not like a, a dryer where I'm going to have to have it delivered and stuff. I could just drive to Best Buy or something and buy one. And I'm thinking, okay, I guess... I guess I'm not going to fix this one. I guess this one is beyond me. I've been beaten. And then I remembered something. So when you put the lid on, there's an area around the, 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 the outside that's part of the main unit. 
they can get a little grungy, like uh, steam and stuff can collect there. And there's actually a little, I don't know how to put this, there's a little drain in the back and a little cup that will collect this, this, the condensate that might form in this area. But it doesn't prevent it from getting kind of gunky. So the last time I cleaned the Instant Pot, and, you know, you take the inside of the pot out and that you can clean and the top comes off, but the, the thing itself, you can't submerge it or anything so I'll usually just wipe it down but occasionally I have to take it over to the sink and put it on its side and like get into this groove and make sure that's really cleaned out well and I remembered that I did that and to do that I will unplug the plug from the back of the the, the device just to better able maneuver it and not have that plug flopping around so I walked over to the Instant Pot, remembering that I had done this a few days previous, and I turned it around, and there was the place where the plug goes. <laughs> we both were plugging the plug in, but the other end wasn't attached to anything. So I plugged it back in, turned around, plugged it into the wall, it came on perfectly, and I announced to my wife that I had fixed it. <laughs> So, I don't know if she'll figure it out, but it was my fault to begin with, and uh, I guess I, I'm i allowed to take the credit for repairing it. I did fix the dryer, though. Uh, as, we, as we live in an increasingly technically driven world, fewer and fewer things are repairable. It's nice to have those little wins, even if it's something as stupid as realizing it wasn't plugged in. It feels like a victory in some way. Anyway, folks, um, I think I've gone on enough for one day. I don't know what I'm going to do today. I... I did not hurt my back yesterday. I was much more careful about the way we worked, and I feel great today, so that's good. Um, although I did work a lot yesterday, so I might just take it easy today. Back to work tomorrow. Tomorrow's a long week. Got a lot of meetings, a lot of, a lot of administrative stuff I got to get through. Tomorrow starts a long week. Tomorrow is not a long week, although tomorrow might feel like a long week. Yeah, so I might just take it easy today and enjoy a pipe or two. Esoterica Dunbar. Good stuff if you got it. There's plenty of good vapors out there, though. I don't want to equate this to Poplar Camp. Poplar Camp's a completely different beast. It's a ribbon cut, for one. Somebody said to me, you can't have any more Dunbar, but you can have Poplar Camp. I'd be happy. Somebody said, you can't have any more Escudo, but you can have Poplar Camp. Or, I'm trying to think of another Virginia Preak that I enjoy. There's a couple out there. You know, it's, there's plenty of Virginia Preaks. And I've made my own. I, I have quite a bit of Perique because I like it so much. So I bought just some straight uh, Perique. I like the granular stuff. It blends more easily. And, you know, I've taken Virginia, straight Virginias that I don't like so much and just added Perique until I liked it. And some of them I've enjoyed more than things that I, that I purchase uh, ready to smoke. Where am I going with this? Don't chase Esoterica Dunbar, but if you, if you see it and you like vapors, grab it. And if you, uh, you know, if you, if you have a chance to try it, I highly recommend it. It's nice stuff. All right, folks, with that, I'm going to draw this to a close. I 
hope you all have a fantastic Sunday and a wonderful week ahead. We'll be back on Friday night with another live stream. I think we might have a guest host, not a guest host, a co-host on Friday. We'll see how that pans out. Uh, gotta, gotta talk to my potential co-host this week and see if I can make it happen. But we'll have fun regardless. And uh, with that, I'm gonna get off to my Sunday and you get off to yours. So you all take care. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.